All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the most tattooed man in the Pokemon community. What's up, Callum? <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Well, go on? Wait, I mean, yeah, it's probably correct, actually. I was planning uh, out that intro, and I was like, this, this, this dude is so incredibly tattooed. And, like, you, yeah. you got to be the most... Got to have the most... Yeah, I mean, far. the only other person I know of that would compete would be Liam, Ace Trainer Liam, but he's just got his arms and, his, like, the back of his neck done, as far as I know, so... Yeah, true, true. Yeah, you got yeah. some new, you got some, uh, some new ink on the face recently I saw on Instagram or some shit, right? Yeah, 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 Wild, yeah. Bro. The face tattoos. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I'm running out of space. I'll be that. I'm not running out of space. <laughs> I mean, I, I've covered a lot of my legs and my arms, and I do have, like, obviously my chest, my back, and, you know, my belly i've got like i've got like a lot of other places i can go but i've always really liked face tattoos so yeah, yeah you got not? the um the like johto the the freaking wings wings yeah i was like I don't, why do they call them wings they're like they're feathers but they're called the wing i don't know uh, I th yeah i think wait no i think they are called feathers but they're lugia doesn't have feathers i don't really oh, know true. i don't know but i think they're called silver wing and gold uh, rainbow wing that's the one yeah silver wing yeah. and rainbow wing well, that's dope, man. Yeah. You got the you got the pokeball on the hand. This man always strapped with the pokeball. Yeah, I've got pokeball on the hand. I actually have another subtle Pokemon reference. Uh, my fingers, uh, my right hand has like a uh, leaf, a leaf tattoo, and my left hand has fire. So it's like fire red, leaf green. It's kind of <laughs> like subtle. It's not it's not exactly Pokemon, but it's like a subtle reference. And I also have like Gracidia flowers. I I, I prefer like subtle, <laughs> subtle. Yeah. Revan, if somebody like looks at the feathers, they're not exactly gonna know it's Pokemon unless I tell them. So yeah, rather than like a shaman tattooed on your arm, like <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. I mean, nothing wrong with that though, because I mean, I do have a scrafty tattooed on my foot, yeah. but you do? Oh shit, <laughs> on the foot? Yeah, nice. It, that, that hurt. Which one hurt the most? Got to be the head, the the fucking face, right? No, actually, feet hurts more. I really? think. Well, like on the top yeah. of your foot. Yeah, on the top of my foot. I, I, that was my most painful tattoo, I think. Actually, that makes uh, sense, foot. because this shit is, like, all bone right there. Yeah, that, it was... I, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. Everybody's different, though. Everybody's got different, like, pain tolerances. Yeah. I have one that's, like, kind of going I was gonna ask. to my armpit. And that was, mm -hmm. like, the worst part for me. It's, like, super... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right oh, is, you just have the one tattoo? I have... Uh, I have three. I have like a geometric like bear on the outside of my arm and then on my mm -hmm. forearm i have like a mountain scene and then i lived in hawaii for about a year and i got a like a hawaii uh scene tattooed there on my uh like inner arm like yeah. Toward... yeah hawaii seems great yeah yeah man it was it was it was interesting it was a cool a cool time in my life i graduated from college and i was like oh i don't have shit to do i don't have a job i don't have like any <laughs> obligations so i was like i'm gonna just Get one of my buddies and just move to Hawaii for like a year. And it was, it have was you chill. have you posted pictures of your tattoos? Because I don't think I've actually seen them. Uh, I, just I don't think I've got a feeling you have posted them. Actually, I've shown them like on stream and stuff, but I don't have. I should probably do that at some point. Should I, I want to get more? Yeah. Though. Like my arms like super not filled out at the moment. There's just like the three, so I gotta like I don't know. Yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. I, I've, I'm gonna finish up my arm because I just yeah my right arm isn't. It's like just the bottom half of it. I still gotta get the rest of it done, but I don't know. I'm just. I've recently decided to just rock the the no hair, the bald look. So I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna just get my whole head covered. Like I'm gonna get the entire the entire head covered. Like just oh in tattoos. God, dude, that's gonna that's gonna be wild. It's also so damn expensive. I don't know how. Every time I see someone that has like so many tattoos, I'm like just thinking about the amount of money this person carries around on their skin. I'm like, my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. They're they're pretty pricey. I mean, I usually get like. I guess before quarantine, I was like getting like one every month, basically. Yeah. Yo, uh, I wanted to talk to you about, so this man lives in Scotland, and that was actually kind of made it a little bit interesting for us to even plan this, because you're like seven or eight hours ahead or something like that. So it's. Oh, yeah. What What's your time right now? Is it like uh, 12, 12 or 12, 12.45, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's 7.45. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, because I've never met anybody that lived in, lived in Scotland. What's, what's it like out there, man, especially in terms of COVID? Because America's obviously fucked, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, America is apparently doing awful. Where about is it you you stay? Uh, so right I'm, in, I'm in Colorado. I, I live in Denver. Right, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, cool. I have no idea where that is on the map. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, uh, kind of in the middle, and then shifted to the left. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Because most people I know are EST or like uh, in LA, so it's like eight hours. So you're kind of like, yeah, you're kind of. I've never really. I don't think I've really spoken to somebody with a seven hour difference. It's yeah, either it's five actually, or eight for me. Yeah, exactly. It's funny because. We're in, uh, it's called Mountain Time, which is like our... our, our right, yeah, I recognize that. <laughs> MST yeah. Mountain Standard, which is like one of the most random. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Scotland's apparently doing pretty good when it comes to coronavirus. I'm not, like, paying the most attention, but, like, my other friends that are from Scotland are, you know, I, I think we're, we're doing better than most. We're doing better than a lot of countries. Yeah. Um, well, that's good to hear. New Zealand's obviously doing the best. Yeah. Yeah, New Zealand. New Zealand smashed that. Some smart fuckers out there. Yeah. Um, but I, it's got to the point now where you can, I think... I think they made it mandatory in the UK to go to the store. You have to wear a mask, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, most people in Scotland don't really fight that, which is kind of, you know, weird. Uh, I figured more people would be like, I don't know, would, 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 would I guess, fight that. Like, uh, I don't know, because I, I know there's just a lot of stupid people out there. Or, yeah, but now, most people seem to be just following the rules here and, you know, stopping it. I mean, there probably will be a second wave of it that will maybe be worse than the first one, but. Yeah, see, what I'm thinking is, dude, when the flu season comes around, which is, like, soon, it's going to be absolute mayhem, dude. Exactly, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's scary. Uh, I'm just trying to, like, visit my friends, but also stay, like, cautious. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it sucks. Like, I've gone out, like, we have, like, some, like, restaurants that are actually open. Like, I've gone out a couple times, like, I try not to, because it's, like, pretty Mm -hmm. easily avoidable, but it's, like, at some point, you gotta go out and do some shit, man. It's, like, we can yeah i didn't visit i didn't like see anybody that i knew for like four months and it was just like so mentally like draining for me because i need like social interaction i'm like i'm, I'm like you know exactly. i'm an extrovert i want to just go out and talk to people like that's, you, that's all i want to do too? yeah i live alone as well so it was kind of you know it's kind of bad <laughs> nice you got like your own apartment mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's um, actually probably kind of nice because like i have a couple roommates and it's always like an interesting thing like I, like they can obviously hear like our walls are super thin and it'll be like I want to like kind of stream late and I'm like waking people up and shit so it's it's an interesting dynamic it's at least I have like interaction day like living alone would be will be a little bit weird especially like with all this COVID shit going on but, like, yeah although like with, with roommates you have to like if they're gonna go out you have to be like shit be careful don't bring it back and infect me yeah see that's what's weird they're not like super cautious about it and like I don't know we're, we're trying to do our best but bro it's it's wild, man. Have you lived in Scotland your whole life? Yeah, I moved to Wales, which is like 500 miles away from Scotland. It's like it's just it's in the UK, but it's on in like uh, I don't know. It's it's just a different it's just a different part of the UK. You can drive there, you know. It's not like I flew or anything. So yeah. I lived in Wales for like a year, roughly, like in 2017. And then I moved back up to Scotland. So yeah, I've basically just always been in Scotland. I am planning on moving to England hopefully this year at some point if coronavirus will allow me. Nice. Um, What's the plan but, with that? Like, what? Why the move? I'm gonna I'm gonna live with a friend. Yeah, for it for a change. I mean, I nice. I think this is my first time. This is like the longest I've been like living alone. Like uh when i first moved out i lived alone for like three months and i went back to my parents because i was like yeah this shit sucks and then i got a roommate (laughs) instead and then yeah i think i've lived alone now for like two almost three years so uh so you got pretty used to it it's hard it's also just expensive to live by yourself like i don't know what the what it's like there but like here at least like if you're trying to get like a studio apartment in like la like it's so incredibly expensive (sighs) Yeah, no, Scotland's actually pretty good when it comes to prices. Like my apartment, uh, I think I'm trying to I'm trying to like convert it to like your money just yeah. mentally. I think <laughs> yeah. I think it's like maybe like four fifty a month for rent. It's ridiculous. Four fifty? Yeah, that's it's a it's a one bedroom apartment though. It's very yeah. small. So damn, but that's legit. It's I I pay like around eight hundred a month, and like we get like I I have like a house that has like a pretty decent sized backyard and stuff. But like even for that, like around here is still pretty cheap. But that's wild. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotland, yeah, I, I always talk to my American friends about how cheap it is where I live, and they're just like, God, man. So whenever I move in with somebody else, it will get even cheaper, because oh, yeah. and well, it'll be a bigger place, too, and I won't be alone, and I don't know. It'll just be... I'm really I'm really hoping I'm able to move this year. I mean, I'm not like... I don't know. I, I just I hate where I... The area I sort of live. Like, it's... So I live on a main road, so if you hear, like, any sirens, that's why. Uh, that, that happens a lot. I, I live in a main road, so there's like a lot of sirens. There's a lot of people shouting outside, and I don't really mind. I don't really care that much if people hear that in my videos or in my streams or or whatever. It's just it, it just gets old really quick. So oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we live pretty close to a freeway too, and like you can just hear people like motorcycles and shit constantly, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, um, yeah. It's hard to get the perfect location though, because like despite all that, I guess the like, issues. Like I really do enjoy how close I am, I guess, to the city center so like i walk two minutes down the road and i'm just uh around so many like stores 
yeah. it's very convenient. I don't it's have to like convenient. take a bus or whatever to get there. Yeah, fuck that. Do you drive? Like, do you have a car? No, I don't. We don't. It's not really necessary in the UK compared to America. Like, yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, like the public transport. I mean, although <laughs> I think we do complain a lot about public transport, like buses and trains, but like they're <laughs> it's really they're really convenient and really frequent to the yeah. point where, you know, I don't think it's necessary to drive here. Yeah, I mean, if you can avoid I've, it, there's really no need. I ha I did do like a lot of driving lessons, and I I, I don't know, I think if I'm gonna learn to drive again, I will probably rather do the practical uh, practical work first. I think that's yeah. what it's called the the written work, because that's the stuff where I would struggle on. To be yeah, honest, the written I, shit I is hard. I remember when I first got my license, I think I passed by like. I missed almost the exact amount of questions that you can miss and still pass because <laughs> they like Jesus they try to Christ. like fuck with you like all the answers are like super confusing oh there's the siren right there <laughs> yeah there's the siren man literally like every every time i stream people are like just waiting for the siren and then as soon as the siren's like yeah <laughs> not a callum stream without a siren in the background man i mean oh, it's kind of fitting because my old youtube intro used to have like the siren and stuff so it's yeah, just yeah. Really funny <laughs> you just like hold the microphone outside the window to ca capture that <laughs> yeah exactly that's funny so for stream like for streaming i noticed i mean you've been streaming pretty much like since you've been doing content creation like have you been focusing more on live streaming as opposed to like youtube content or just kind of trying to balance uh well i mean i actually couldn't stream until 2015 like i've been making videos since like 2013 but my internet was so bad that i couldn't oh, really? stream until 2015 oh, and sure. then even then with, with with is i was always on and off kind of like streaming on twitch like sometimes i'd stream for like three months and i would just quit for like a year so yeah. I didn't really start super getting into streaming until like I think 2018. That's when I started streaming a lot on Twitch, and then uh, I don't know what it, I think. Um, I think I had a YouTube manager suggest that I try streaming on YouTube because mm -hmm. they're going to be investing into YouTube streaming, and then also I saw a lot of my friends streaming on YouTube, so I was like, sure, I'll give it a go. And then I don't know, kind of just took off from there. Like Do you mostly uh, stream on YouTube, not Twitch. Yeah, I've not streamed on Twitch in a year now. Like YouTube streaming is really. I just feel more at home there because that's where my audience is. Yeah, that makes um, sense. And yeah, I it's don't know. It's one of those things where, like, I like I feel like I probably should stream on YouTube, but I've like already just like always always been on Twitch, and it just like feels different to like switch it up. Like I just like the interface on Twitch. For whatever yeah, reason. yeah, for sure. Know. It's one of those things where like I've just kind of stuck with it just because it's like what I'm used to. But yeah, it doesn't make sense me, keeping it all on one platform. It, it's I don't know. It's better to not put all your eggs in one basket. A lot of people say, but for me, like I already wasn't super consistent on Twitch, so it made it easier to just you know because i would always be like oh maybe i'll upload my twitch streams onto youtube but then i just never did so yeah instead of just, i can just leave my after i'm done streaming i can just leave it leave the video up if i want it or i can unlist it and it's just really true. convenient yeah it's definitely definitely convenient yeah youtube is I've, I've never even streamed on youtube but i really should probably at least give it a try but i've been streaming mostly like i don't know i'm kind of like the same like you I've, I've been always really off and on like i've had my twitch for yeah. like six or seven years or something but i never really was like fully because it's tough to maintain a schedule man like that's, absolutely that's yeah nice it's so hard content is you can like kind of prepare for like a break and things like that you can mm -hmm. kind of schedule things out but streaming yeah you don't you know, stream for a week and you lose like half your subs <laughs> <laughs> exactly dude it's tough man it's also it's also fun though it's like it's it, especially for pokemon stuff it's cool to be able to like interact with people in real time like doing like a nuzlocke or just doing like a series like it, it's fun to have like that audience in real time which is so I've, I've kind of like focused on twitch more lately just because it's kind of what i enjoyed like as quarantine happened i, I got, got into kind of streaming a lot more often and trying to maintain a little bit of a schedule but yeah yeah, yeah. it's really hard to have a schedule i kind of just stream whenever i can which is most days i can but yeah. you know um I, I i feel bad like when i i feel bad if i'm like oh this is the schedule then i just don't follow it because i know how bad i am at following like a schedule <laughs> so i just yep. kind of don't <laughs> yeah i'm exactly the same way and you've been you've been like full-time content creation for like a long ass time now right um yeah i've i've been full content creation i've never had another job this has been my only job nice yeah i was the same way so, up until like two years ago year and a half ago it's like when i got my actual actual job which really puts a puts a lot of pressure on like because i mean i work on a computer all day like i do so i do graphic design and mm -hmm. like marketing stuff so like i'm always just like at a desk at a computer and it's like tough to like come home and then have like try to maintain the energy to like be able to do youtube stuff so that's another like yeah yeah, yeah. I, I have so much respect for people with like a job and then also do youtube at the side like it's such a huge hustle yeah, it's, shit, it's <laughs> hard man but it's also nice to like not have that pressure of like having it knowing that youtube's like my main source of income so i can like absolutely kind of, like, bring it back to the roots where like i just do it because i enjoy it. it's like a fun hobby like i'll always do it like even if 
like shit fully dies out like i'll still probably like i'm still gonna be playing the games anyway so it's like i might as well just be that's that's exactly how i feel i'm the exact same way like if i decide i don't really want to do youtube anymore i can still see myself making videos every now and then you know whenever i find the free time because it's something i'm genuinely just passionate about i love pokemon and people have always asked like why don't you try a different game and i'm just like because i just love pokemon yeah i don't don't know it's one of those things where pokemon just i feel like translates really well to like content creation it's also just like one of the more most fun things at least for me to like make content on like i don't know have you ever Mm -hmm. thought about like doing other stuff on a a different channel i I mean yeah I've, i've like experimented with it but i just don't think i care about the games enough to like yeah. make full on like i guess whole like I've, I've, i did like a second channel where i played like some crash bandicoot games but there's just not enough sub- substance there to like maintain a whole channel on or yeah, you know yeah. whatever i don't really play enough other games regularly to make content on a second channel so i just sometimes stream other games like uh, we played fall guys on my channel recently and yeah that's why uh, it's nice it, it's good to be able to bring different kind of stuff to like live stream format just because i feel like it, yeah. it translates a little better rather than like youtube videos because that's why it's uh-huh. tough to, like, bring something different to, like, your normal channel. Like, it'll, like, I don't know, the YouTube algorithm is just going to fuck you Yeah, up. it's scary. I think as long as you unlist it afterwards, YouTube's algorithms won't won't hate you too much. Like, every Friday, Luke plays, like, uh, Mario Party. So we'll I'll sometimes get in on that every Friday. And uh, I'll just stream that as well. And, you know, it's it's not quite Pokemon, but it's, you know, enough people translate over from the nintendo pokemon audience to they'll, they'll still enjoy it you know what i mean yeah, see that's what's good is there's a lot of, i mean it does carry over like most people that are into like nintendo games they're always into pokemon and they'll, they'll kind of like translate over to other things especially like mario party and like mario kart and shit like i stream like some mario kart every now and again it's it's a good time it's good it's, it's nice yeah. to switch it up sometimes like especially like with what we do when it comes to like series and stuff it's it's tough to like keep that fresh so it's kind of nice to get a little palate cleanser every now and again exactly uh like sometimes i just don't feel like sitting down and recording pokemon for hours then also streaming pokemon for hours i'd rather you know play something else with friends or or if i do play pokemon in a shiny hunt i'd like to just talk to my friends on the call while i do it like you know it's yeah Yeah. it's nice to mix things up definitely exactly that's why it's also nice like i feel like when i'm streaming on twitch it's like i'm switching i'm completely switching it up and it's also nice because like lately i've done um, like my recent videos have been kind of just like highlight videos of streams, which I think is actually kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Being able to being able to kind of like double dip in content, but also like I like the format of, of like highlight stuff because I've just always done like long form like series of like nuzlocks and things like that. So then being able to like get like edit in highlights is actually it's actually kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've I've not really dipped too much into the highlight edit highlights myself um i do know that they're really like enjoyed by a lot of people though like you know you see small ant i think all of his content is just stream highlights but people love it you know yeah bro small ant get, that guy does so much crazy shit like i've watched his videos where he'll be like he does the gnarliest challenges i'm like how does yeah. how is this even possible from like the title and he like really goes in there was one he like yeah took no, zero damage in the entire platinum run or something like that yeah <laughs> like, it's dude. just the the patience on this man <laughs> it's fucking wild dude that's yeah crazy. but doing it like live over on twitch is i don't know i mean I've, for me like I've, I've i've thought about doing challenge videos like that and streaming it but then i, I was also kind of worried about like you know spoiling it for the viewers because i'm like you know when i turn it into a video maybe a lot of people that have watched the streams will already know what happens yep. and don't want to watch the video but yeah see, that's true it's like a fine know. line right like being able to make that stuff but also not have it be like super redundant and stuff that they've already seen which is yeah yeah dude have you have, exactly. so you know of mr beast right mm-hmm you know this man he used to do pokemon showdown videos on his channel damn i didn't know that dude when he started his youtube channel like his first like if you go to like his oldest videos i remember one time i was just chilling like watching some of his videos with my buddies and we just went to like go see what he used to do like and he has just literally just screen recorded showdown battles dude <laughs> i was like oh that's my God. amazing he probably yeah, I mean, knows who we are like it <laughs> at some point that's a that's a good point i mean that's i mean good. maybe not so much me but definitely he definitely would know who you are he was like, doing it no like way. early like 2010 and i was like this was the same exact type of videos i was doing i was like yo mr beast give me like 100 grand to like beat you in showdown <laughs> jesus man he's got 40 million subscribers now Dude, yeah mr beast good. absolutely killing it. i was actually just watching his last video it's like that's the most interesting story of like a youtube channel because this dude like he used to yeah. just do gaming shit. Like he he was just like us. He would just do like commentary of like Call of Duty. He would play like Pokemon Showdown, and he like, and then he realized that he could like make a bunch of money, and then he found that format that he's just running with, which is insane, dude. That guy makes, he must make a ton of money, but also he spends like a damn million dollars on like every video. 
Oh yeah, God. it's it's ridiculous. I don't know how he does it. I was just I I, I try to like like justify. I I can't imagine how much he makes because I don't know. Like it's just the the, I, the amount of people he's got to pay, what he pays yeah. for in the actual video itself. It's like what what you know what cut does he get of it? Exactly. A lot of the time he used to just, he uses like sponsored um like ads yeah. and then uses that money for like to like kind of pay for the video but like that's it i would love to see this dude's like spreadsheet like even just like knowing kind of like how youtube monetization works like like we obviously know well and then like thinking about how many views and like shit this guy <laughs> must get like his <laughs> analytics are probably insane dude yeah it's He's very interesting it very well. very intriguing yeah i i've I known about him i think i first heard about him from the uh i think he said a word for like 24 hours <laughs> like, he blew up from that. Exactly. He he really put in the effort to go viral. You got to respect. Yeah, him. He did. He did. Like like uh, he deserves it, man. He, he deserves what he's got. It's too bad he didn't stick with the Pokemon, though, man. <laughs> it's too bad. We I don't know if he'd have forty million subs if he stuck with Pokemon. But <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of big creators out there that like really do like Pokemon. Like I saw Ninja the other day tweet out about his Pokemon yeah, Go friend yeah, like, about Pokemon Go. I was like, oh shit, add me, bro. <laughs> I was like, I'd maybe shoot my shot if I was verified, but I'm, I'm not fucking verified. <laughs> right? Yeah, you play you play a bunch of Pokemon Go, right? Yeah, I I really I mean I kind of another siren, and I kind of <laughs> died down because of um quarantine, but yeah. like I did I did get back into it because of the remote raids. Yeah, yeah, the remote raid, remote raids really brought it back. Except, bro, there was the Rayquaza was out recently, right? And yeah. I took me like 60 raids to get a fucking shiny. I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like 45 into it. I was like, I cannot keep doing this. But I like at this point, I'm too deep, bro. I got to go. Yeah. Do it. I finally it's got It's like it. the odds are meant to be like one in 20. So yeah, I know it's supposed to be one in 20. And I did three times that I was Jesus, but I finally got That's it. That's so ridiculous. God. Yeah. I, 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 I think I did a hundred Rayquaza raids or something and I've got five shinies. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, I have a fucking theory. All right. So hear me out. So like. I would always go when I was doing this. This was like my first time I actually like grinded for a shiny. It was my first one I've gotten from a, a raid. But like so essentially, I would go and I would like spend five bucks and I would go immediately buy like six remote raid passes and then do them. And like eventually, it came to a point where I would just keep running out and then I got over it. I was like, I'm not spending any more money on this bullshit. So I like gave up for like a couple of days. And then in my Discord, someone was like, Yo, Rayquaza raid. It was actually my girlfriend. She was like, <laughs> I need help with this one. So I was like, all right, fine. I like went yeah. in the shop and then rather than buying coins and then buying raid passes, I went to like click to buy the raid pass. I was like, you don't have enough coins. It's like, click here to buy the exact amount, like buy a hundred to get one. So I like bought it through that. And then boom, that one was the shiny. I was like, dude, you spend money directly on the raid pass you're using and they just like reward you with the shiny. I was like, these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you spend money and they're like, oh, well now we gotta, now we gotta give them the shiny now. I'm just kidding. I was yeah, I feel just coincidence, you. but I was like, that shit's hilarious. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, coincidences like that are hilarious. I've, I've been, um, I've been going hard on the Poke Go though, man. Yeah, yeah, the remote raids really did bring it back. I really wish they gave us better bundles, but I know they're making a shitload of money from us. But the way they've oh, yeah. got it right now. Yeah, yeah, it's it. Ever since like the shinies came out, was when I was like, all right, now I gotta pop this thing open anytime I go like anywhere new. <laughs> Yo, absolutely, absolutely. Because, I mean, for me, I'm trying to play Pokemon legit. Like, I'm not trying to, like, gen and stuff like that. I don't really care yeah. if you do or not, but I, I want to play legit. So, whenever they finally bring out Pokemon on Home and Pokemon Go compatibility, I'll uh, I'll have, for, like, 420 Shinies in Pokemon Go, I can just dump them all into Pokemon Home. For real? For real. I have, like, I think I have, like, almost 200 or something like that. I'm not on your level, bro. I know you're level, you're, like, level 40. I saw you posted, you got the 1,000 legendary raids or something like that, that achievement. I was yeah. Like, Jesus, I just hit 100. I was like, my God, this man's going hard. Yeah, I went hard, like, 2018, 2019. I used to go out for walks, like, every day and play with my friends. Like, I, I made a lot of friends from Pokemon Go. I just, yeah. that game, like, kind of kept my love for Pokemon alive when we were going through, like, the dry spell where, like, Let's Go came out and yep. all that. I feel like it's cool. Like, Pokemon Go's sick because, like, I have a lot of friends in real life that aren't even really, like, Pokemon fans, but, like, they play it. Like, yeah. they'll, like, text me. They're like, yo, did you did you get a Deoxys? Like, invite me. And, like, and it's funny because every time, like, I chill with them and play, I'm, like, trying to, like, tell them like what all these pokemon are actually like about and like <laughs> in the actual games because like a lot of them haven't even really played through games since like red and blue but they're like all about it because they're like shiny pokemon like, yeah the say? thing is pokemon go actually did a i mean from the people i made friends with they did a really good job because like they released let's go and now after let's go a lot of people that got let's go from pokemon go are also now getting sword and shield because they want to try the new games and yep, i'm like that exactly they're smart very smart like, pokemon go was a good investment for for uh 
Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, they aren't they aren't no dummies, man. Pokemon, biggest media franchise in the world. They're making some yeah, smart moves, bro. Do you remember how, like, the idea of Pokemon Go started was like a long time. It was like probably like 2013 yeah. where they did that like Google like Maps yep. thing. It was like an, it was like an April yep. Fool's joke, and they're like, download Google Maps and like get this extension that like every area has specific Pokemon. You can like go out and catch them. They were like released a trailer where it like looked exactly kind of like what Pokemon Go is now, but like mm -hmm. it was like a joke at first. And I was like, yo, this shit looks legit. And then they're like, oh, hold on, we can actually turn this into a thing. Yeah, I think, I think the amount of people interested in it shocked them, and they were like, wait. <laughs> like, hold on, there might be some fucking money to be made here. I don't think I actually had a phone when that came out, so I never actually got involved with it, but I do remember seeing people posting about it on Twitter. Yeah, so I remember it was yeah. like, they showed a trailer of like a guy like climbing a mountain with his phone and like looking at his phone trying to like go find a ride on or something. And then like yeah. you, you download the actual thing, and it was basically like you would just like use your like google maps and then like scroll around and there'll just be like different pokemon and they're like first person to find a mew like get something and i was like going hard with my friends because i thought it was like actually real but <laughs> it's like it was just interesting to see that it was what kind of like evolved into pokemon go i just like that was a yeah. memory like i remember sometime at some point you ever have it to where someone will like go back and like one of your like super old tweets from like years ago uh sometimes occasionally that's yeah. what happened to me with that i was like i got someone had, that had liked my thing it was like my response to that initial video that the pokemon put out and i was like too bad it doesn't look like the fucking trailer i was all mad and it <laughs> <laughs> happens to me all the time dude people will like like my old tweets and i'm like how do you find this but what it is is that like i used to tweet out a lot of the time for like nicknames i'd be like yo give me a nickname for nido queen and now like when you go on google and type in like nido queen nickname like my tweet asking for that is like the top one so i'll have a tweet from like <laughs> eight years ago that people are like responding to like telling me to like name it shit i'm like where are you finding this like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's also a way to search tweets on Twitter if you like search specific yeah, keywords. Yeah. I, I I do that for myself a lot because I'll I'll be like, God, I want to show my friends this funny tweet I made a year ago. I just True. They, they missed it. They, True. They, they need to see this. That's also how people be getting fucking exposed out here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People just people search your tweets like that. Social media is social media is weird, man, because it's like it's such a necessary thing to like be involved in as a creator. Like yeah. I know you're active on like Instagram and Twitter, which are really like the only two that are even worth like investing any time in. I just like I just like lurking on Twitter, man. It's always interesting to like just see what people are about, like because I never really like interact with people. Like I was gonna say, it's funny because when I hit you up to be on this, I looked and I was like, our last messages to each other was like me giving you my Skype name, which <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which that's, was like uh, that's ancient. a long ass time ago, back when back when Skype. Skype was yeah i don't know i don't i don't really like go out of my way to talk to people because not that i don't want to it's just i i don't know i'm just I, i'm down to talk to people if they, if they want to talk to me but i know people have got their own shit going on and yeah, you know yeah. i've already got quite a lot of friends as is so it's like i know like you know if they want to come if you want to come talk to me then sure go for it i'm down to talk but um, i don't know it's just... yeah i'm pretty much the exact same way to be honest like i don't have like i don't know a lot of people in the community have kind of like their little their little groups but i never really have like been to i don't know like i have a lot of i have a lot of friends that i've met through this obviously throughout the years because i've been doing this shit for like 10 years but like i don't know i just have like so much going on like in real life that it's hard for me to yeah like, I don't know. exactly exactly like i don't know everybody's got their own stuff going on so you know it's i just don't want to disturb people <laughs> yeah true yeah man social media as a creator is an interesting topic like i remember like i have i have a facebook like fan page that i like started at one point that i like never have done like, anything too. with i think i have yeah. like thirty thousand followers on there or some shit but like obviously i feel so dead. old because facebook just confuses me it's no, just such a weird platform <laughs> yeah we're we're the boomers now i mean the boomers do run run trap on facebook though like, exactly yeah like they understand it just fine but i just don't i just don't get it it just i feel like it's so complicated for no reason I know, yeah, right. I don't like. I can't even sign into my my Facebook page because like I had it through like a separate account because I didn't want like my personal Facebook being linked to it. But now I like can't yeah. log into that one because it was like they're like telling me to like send in a photo of my ID to like get like into. I'm like I don't even need this. <laughs> I don't need this shit. Yeah, exactly. I think my Facebook fan page is still called Hildum's Crafty just because I just not changed it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, yo, I wanted to talk to you about what's up with the the branding change, man. So you went from putting Hildum's Crafty. Which I almost call you sometimes, but now you just yeah. call him. Um, well, I mean, 
Well, you know, we were talking about Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is, like, huge now. It's a huge part of just Pokemon. And um, there's so many Pokemon now. Like, there's we're, we're almost at 900. We're, you know, we're reaching 1,000. Uh, there's so many Mons that, like, I don't think it's fair for me to assume that, like, I guess everybody knows what Scrafty is. Like, there's a lot of Pokemon fans that probably have got no fucking clue what Scrafty is That's because there's true. just so many Pokemon. That's so funny. I was like, I think Gildam Callum's just a more friendlier, approachable name. Like, people will immediately learn that my name's Callum. I mean, most people already did, but, you know, yeah. it'll be even more apparent. Yeah, and I think it's name. just a nicer name to look at. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, I think most people even called you Callum for the most part anyway, so it's kind of like... Yeah, exactly. So, scrafty. for me, it was just the Scrafty part was just weird. It was just because he was my mascot, but now even then, I've kind of changed it. It's kind of like a custom Scrafty going on. Yeah. yeah. You still got the Scrafty shit going on, so it's, like, still there. But, yeah, you're one of, like, yeah. the only... Well, I guess there's been others, but, like, one of, like, the bigger, like, channels to, like, rebrand like that. But, it obviously... Yeah, 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 yeah. Either, like... Uh... I mean, it wasn't that crazy of a rebrand because, like, like most, like you said, most people already knew me as Callum, so it wasn't like I was changing much. As long as the hoodlum part is still in there, I'm sure people would still, like, you know, if I change my name completely to like something, something else, then that would be a bit of a scarier rebrand. But hoodlum Scrafty to hoodlum Callum wasn't like that much of a scary one. A lot of people were like, oh, "I prefer hoodlum Scrafty," and I'm just like, "I don't really care what you prefer because you, <laughs> you call me Callum anyway. It doesn't exactly, matter." Dude, exactly. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that I, my girlfriend uses like. Um, a Netflix account and like I think it's on Netflix I've seen this shit tripped me out maybe it was like Hulu or something but on the top right like the owner of the account was named like Callum Hood and I was like <laughs> holy shit that's like oh my god <laughs> Callum stole this man's brand the hell no there is actually an artist called Callum Hood uh, he's oh, in the band Five Seconds of Summer oh oh wait dude maybe he that okay that had to be what I saw then alright that makes total sense but I was like yeah. dude that's the that's Hoodlum Scrafty right there. Holy shit! Yeah, no, no, that wasn't that wasn't intentional. I don't know. I I actually had my Pokemon Go name as Hoodlum Callum before I made my YouTube name. That, oh really? Yeah. Nice. And I had a friend that always called me Hoodlum Callum as like a meme, and then I kind of just was like, it doesn't sound that bad as like an actual username. So yeah, you know. dude. See, I want to rebrand to just like my name because I have like Hey Dunn, and I just yeah. made that because I didn't like obviously couldn't just make my name Hayden. But it's funny because now I actually have the username youtube.com slash just Hayden spelled regularly. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could just like change that URL and then just like change my current one to that. It's just like, cause I remember the guy actually reached out to me. He was like, yo, like I noticed that everybody comments on this saying that this should be your account. Cause I remember I talked about it in like a Q and a video one time. I was like, yeah, my name is this because my real name spelled was not available. And now I have it, which is hilarious. I upload like some random like videos on there from time to time. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I remember seeing that because you know, like you and like Shofu were like some of the original Pokemon YouTubers I watched like back in the day. So yeah, that's what um, I, I think I feel like I remember seeing you have a second channel. Yeah, I, I, I think you, I feel like channels. you have a channel Mewtwo or something. I, I do. Remember. Yeah, I have youtubecom slash Mewtwo, which was like my like main <laughs> se <laughs> second channel. I have all these dope ass usernames, and then I just use this one because this is what I've like built my stuff on. <laughs> yeah, I really. The thing is, I really liked. Um, I really, 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 really liked like the old way of doing YouTube, where it was like just like usernames, and nobody could like I guess have whatever name they want. Like anybody can name their channel Mewtwo now. Yeah, exactly. But, but wouldn't have the URL, URL for it. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of I understand. I mean, I guess this is how YouTube was gonna go. Yeah. I guess. YouTube old YouTube was the shit, man. Because back when like the early days of like channel customization, you could have, if you were a YouTube partner, you got like the cool banner up on the top and you could like really customize shit. Like it was like old school MySpace, bro. you could be like adding all these cool backgrounds and like different yeah. sections to it. Now it's like everybody's channel looks the same, which is like, I understand it from like a like user interface design standpoint. Like it's nice to have just that like clean feel, but like it used to be so sick, like just being able to have all of that shit like i've gone back on the wayback machine and like looked at my channel in like 2010 and i have like all these like crazy graphics on it and like a bunch of just like interesting shit yeah, back yeah i do i do miss the old design stuff but i totally understand why it is the way it is now yeah it was just so much more customizable man and then google came on t came to youtube and just fucked everything up with google plus that they used for like oh, not cool. long and then it just went away yeah, I had no idea why they bothered with that. Yeah, what the hell? They like try to like try to force a new social media on people. They're like, nah, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll use that. Yeah, That's exactly, right. man. So you started your channel, in like probably like eight years ago, right? Long time. Like, 
Um, yeah, I started, I mean, I started making Pokemon videos in, like, 2011, like, midway through 2011, but, like, I didn't start Hoodlum Scraft until October 2012, so it's coming up eight years now, Jesus. Nice, yeah, still, still uh, definitely one of the OGs when it comes down to it, like, there's not a lot of people that have been around. It's so before. weird hearing you say that, because I, I, I consider, like, you and Shofu and Munching Orange and, you know, like, Poke Cinema like, the OG. Yeah. OGs, but then other people consider me the OG, and I'm like, but I, I thought I was a new kid. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely not new. Like, there's still there's still people that will, like, start their channels. Like, it's, it's always crazy for me to think about, like, some people that had started their channels in, like, the X and Y era, which, like, seems mm -hmm. new, but, like, still, that's even kind of old. Like, like yeah. Shady like Shady came up at around that time. Yeah. And it was, like, it's just interesting to, like, see the different generations of, like, because then there's, like, there's, like, me, Shofu, like, Munching Orange and all of us, and then there's, like, the different kind of like generations of people that start at different times which is wild yeah exactly exactly it's super dope that like you and chofu are still around though because there are a lot of other ogs that like uh pokemon journey hd yeah. is pokemon kind of Journey's... vanished oh, yeah yeah dude a lot of them just straight up vanished it's actually funny because me and chofu were talking about this when we did this podcast but we were like there was a time when we went to twitchcon and it was like me chofu and munching orange just like chilling there we're doing some drinking and we're like damn like us three we're like some of the first to like yeah. even start and like to see what it's grown into now and like everybody has such good videos now where it's like it's super interesting man yeah and it's just you know like the community wouldn't have been anything without you know i guess you know you, you guys kind of started the community you know what i mean like you kind of because when i first came on to i guess the, the pokemon community it was quite small so yeah. you know it was just i guess the community just kind of came from you know, other people that are passionate about Pokemon also starting to make videos on it because they just saw others doing it and were like, oh, I could do this. Yeah, see, it's weird now because it's like most people now would start because of, like, the ability to make money and, like, make a living off of it. But, like, back then, that wasn't even a possibility for, like, most people. We just did it just because it was, like, it was cool. Yeah, like, we, we didn't like, even know it, yeah. I love Pokemon, man. Yeah, it was never even something in the back of your mind, you know what I mean? Yeah, now there's all these people with crazy production value. Which is cool. Like, I think that's obvious. Like, it's definitely good that it's gone that direction. Like, there's just so much more quality content now because back then we were stacking books to, like, set my digital camera up to record my DS screen and shit. <laughs> yeah, or you would, like, put a sock on your Blue Yeti microphone so it didn't <laughs> pop. <laughs> exactly. I've had, dude, I, I used my Blue Snowball for, like, the longest time. I think I had, like, multiple Blue Snowballs and then I finally got a Yeti. And then I was like, oh, I'm fucking professional now, bro. Yeah, no, I'm professional. I mean, I, what, is that what you use right now? No, I'm on a, I have a Rode, just a USB mic. All like, right, all right. I'm, like, using some, like, proper weird Yamaha setup. Like, I've got, yeah. I've got, so I think I'm, I think I have a Rode mic as well, but it's not USB. It's, uh, I forget what they're called. Yeah, you have, like, the mixer <laughs> and shit. You can do all sorts of crap. Yeah, the mixer. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, see, I was going to get, I don't know. This thing, it does the job, man, like. I don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, YouTube will cut the quality down anyway. It doesn't really make that much. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I like it for is how good I sound live, to be honest. Yeah, true. YouTube's interesting because, like, I haven't even really changed my format of anything in, like, forever, like, since I've been starting, which is, it's, like, an interesting move because, obviously, you got to, like, adapt with, like, the changes and shit that happens on YouTube, which is, like, always constantly changing, whether it's, like, algorithms or just kind of, like, shifts in, like, what people enjoy, but, like... For me, at least, I've still, I've literally been doing, like, the same thing for the longest time. I seriously, I mean, I haven't done Wi-Fi battles in a while, but that's kind of what I started doing. And, like, it's funny, because I'll be going back and, like, like looking through my old videos, and I'm, like, thinking about how similar, like, the format was. If I, if it was literally just, like, post-commentary Wi-Fi battles, it was, like, almost doing the same exact thing I used to do when I was, like, 15 on YouTube, which is, like, yeah, crazy. It ain't broke, man. No you know what I mean? Now. Like, true. I, I don't know, Enjoy like, it. Wi-Fi battles break my heart right now, because Sword and Shield obviously has the 20-minute timer. God just... damn it, I know, bro. Every time that comes up, I'm so upset. It really I did, know. like, it makes my so mad. Like, I don't understand. They, they So they started the 20-minute timer in Let's Go, and then they made yeah. the new game, and they're like, oh, nobody cares about singles anyway. So, like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I, it really broke my heart, man. All, all it takes is, like, a small patch, Pokemon. Please, just, even 30 minutes is more than enough, please. Like, 20 you, minutes is not enough time. You would think, I mean, they have the ability to make these DLCs and shit now. You would think that they could just, like, throw that in there with, like, a quality of life upgrade. Like, like even just even necessary? just to have the option, like, even if it's not, like, tournament rules or whatever. Like, just, I want to have an hour-long battle with my yeah. friends again, man. Like, my 3DS yeah. could handle it. Why can't the Switch handle it? See, because those were the good old days, man. We'd be playing on the DS, and you would get, like, literally an hour-long battle. And it would just, like, those, yeah. that, those were what made for, like, interesting matches. Because, 
I don't know. Like, I get what they were trying trying to do like for vgc it's necessary to have a timer and being able to like play against the timer it, it does make sense especially Absolutely. in like live format like competitions and shit but like why why not just give us the option to do an unlimited like singles battle man I don't know. do you have a dra- do you do draft leagues at all i have but yeah i was i was going to talk to you about draft leagues you're in one right now right yeah um the do you do have you ever done like the land play thing for draft leagues i haven't no but i know that that's what people right. have been doing there's like a way to like get around yeah the, timer, right? the way it works in lan is apparently there is unlimited time but you and your opponent just get a 10 minute timer each so there's no way to timer stall and even that would work like if you just gave you and your opponent 10 minute timers but like the time's unlimited because the fact that the the time is i guess you know I, i'd rather i'd rather have my own personal timer than a timer for the actual match itself because then that means the move animations come into account and you can like stall that way and it's yeah, i don't know i just true. I don't mess with that. So yeah, I'm um, I'm in the WB right now. I'm I'm not like I'm not awful at battling, but I definitely am I'm rusty. I'm not really as I wasn't really interested in Sun and Moon because of the Z moves. I just yeah. did not vibe with Z moves at all. Because you weren't really like you never really started as like a battler like YouTuber, right? Yeah, always more like I started like, as like let's plays, and then I got popular from doing like free for alls. Yeah, yeah, you find uh, let's play free for all game for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I guess it was kind of like battle content, but not like you actually have to be good to play. You just have to be entertaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. So, I mean, I've learned well, a lot man. about battling, but it's just there's a few things here and there that I don't quite know. There's just there's a lot to learn. Yeah, like, um, right. for example, Ditto coming in and transforming into a Tentacruel. Does it soak up the toxic spikes or not? I didn't fucking know that. Apparently, it doesn't. <laughs> Dude, I always had this idea for a video series, which someone out there is definitely feel feel free to, to steal this, but I always wanted to do a thing like kind of like Mythbusters where like I would come up with like weird ass ideas like that, like that exact like thing. Like does this like what happens when you send in a ditto on some toxic spikes, like as it transforms into a poison type, like does it absorb it and just kind of like trying to find these weird scenarios and shit like that. Like, yeah, yeah, in- yeah. I, I think Fufu do you ever heard of Fufu too? Yeah, yeah. He kind of does content like that, where he's like, he, he basically asks questions and answers them. Nice. Yeah, see, I've always thought there's a, there's a lot of options for that shit, because there's a bunch of weird, weird little mechanics Scenario. in Pokemon that they even, like, they even, like, change, like, even now, which... Yeah, like, the the one thing, I think I did a draft league, I think it was WB, I think I did, uh, I, I completely forgot about the priority move on dark type change, prankster yep, on dark type. Prankster, yeah. There's so <laughs> much what, to remember now. That's one that it's gets so complicated. Dude. Yeah, that's I don't know. That's what's also that's what's cool about Pokemon. Like it's funny because I was talking about this with my buddy last night. Like we were having some drinks and we were chilling, and he he like super casual. Like he he knows most of the Pokemon generations, but he doesn't really like know the in depth shit. But I was like explaining to him like EVs and like all this all this crazy shit about Pokemon that I just like blew this man's mind. He's like, dude, I never knew that there was so much about it. Like, <laughs> which is what yeah, makes it oh. cool. Like that's what always like keeps me interested you know like from the time i found out about ivs and evs and shit i was like ooh, there's like there's more to this shit so it's easy to like uh, pick up and play but it's hard to master it's like kind of it's kind of like one of those games to be honest i mean i'm really happy with sword and shield and how easy like sword and shield did so much good with just how easy they made it to breed pokemon and uh you know ability capsules and apparently there's going to be i think in the next dlc i guess this is kind of spoilers i think there's going to be an, an ability capsule that allows you to transform an ability to hidden ability yeah i think so, i saw something about that too they, they data mined yeah. and found that item or something like that yeah so like they're doing so much good for the competitive scene when it comes to playing legit which is why i'm like kind of you know trying to play legit i mean i don't i, I gen my monster wb i won't lie but because yeah. i'm just gonna release them afterwards anyway but like for the most part i want to play legit and i don't know it means a lot that they're they're really hammering down like okay we want you know, want you guys to be as easy as you can to play legit. So yeah, see, that's something uh, that they've really done right with this new generation is like being able to get newer players more introduced and like familiar with different mechanics. Like just how easy it is to like make a competitive team now is just it's good for everybody. Like there's all these people that are like, now back in my day, you had to fucking go kill seventy five magic cards to get a plus twenty in your speed. But it's like yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But it's like that wasn't fun, man. That was just grindy. Yeah, all the all the quality of life changes, I think, are, are are definitely what makes the new generation like the best, at least in terms of competitive. I just hate how it's twenty minute timer, man. It ruined everything. I know. And... There's like there's a couple things that I don't like about the new gen. Obviously, the twenty minute timer has got to be like on the top of the list. There's no reverse recorder. You can't do that shit. 
Oh yeah, that's literally. gotta go too. Then also, so are you like a shiny like you shiny hunt like from now? On? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes. So why wouldn't they introduce any ways to shiny hunt in a in a fun manner? Like what the fuck? There's literally no yeah. cool ways to shiny hunt. There's like the be the best way to do it is just Masuda hatch, and that shit is the most boring thing of all time. Yeah, I, 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 I like Masuda hatching because it is easy for me to talk to the chat and I, I get I hate catching Pokemon. It is so stressful that to is catch Pokemon. True. That's just my personal preference though, but I definitely understand people that like the method hunts. Like, you know, Safari Zone was good fun. I know the Safari Zone, the Friends Safari was really fun to yep. yeah. run around in. Uh, I mean, there was even obviously in the Aura. The, yeah, the, there was like the Pokemon radar and like yeah. Platinum and shit. I don't know. It just made it like. A little bit more fun to have an objective rather than just like hatching eggs. Or, I totally get or, like it's nice to be able to interact with people as just like hatching. You don't have to, it's like super brainless, but yeah, so hard to battles to too. Um, yeah, there was yeah, a, there was a lot of cool ways to shiny hunt. I don't know why. I mean, there was meant to be the kill method this gen, but it didn't really work out as as we like what we thought it would be. Yeah, I know, right? And there was also even in like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I thought it was like shiny hunting in that game was actually super fun because yeah, yeah, they like, nailed it actually. Like that was one where I actually did like quite a few shiny hunting streams just because like that shit was actually pretty sweet being able to see like see the Pokemon in the overworld come up shiny. Like that's something that they could introduce that like I feel like wouldn't be that difficult. Like why would they get rid of that? They put it in one of the most bare bones Pokemon games and then the next generation comes out and they don't even have like anything new or like shiny hunters which like. I'm not a big shiny hunter like i think it's i don't know i just never really have gotten into it in the first place but it's like they could have at least given like thrown us something man come on now yeah exactly i'm not i'm not the biggest shiny hunter myself but i think this generation is pretty dire to shiny hunt in yeah. um maybe it's to give like the way i've always seen it i think the reason why they get rid of certain features sometimes is to give you a reason to go back and play the old games they, I guess maybe they want each game to be special instead true. of an improvement of the of the last. That's like the only way I can really think of it. That's true. Yeah, it's funny because I actually I was at my parents' house recently and I was going through all my old shit. I found like my old DSs and like my actual cartridges, and uh, like I've been playing like Fire Red on my actual uh, Game Boy SP, and like <laughs> I haven't played on like an actual handheld since like the DS shit died. And it's like it's it, it's it's pretty fun, man. Like I loved that as a kid like it just brings back that nostalgic feeling like, it's a different experience i prefer it to emulating if i'm ever gonna like do a serious playthrough of a game i'm playing it on a hardware instead yeah. of like emulation like i don't i feel you. I, i'd rather not emulate if i can help it you know what i mean yeah it comes down to like i get too comfortable with like the speed up button and that just kind of like Absolutely, well, yeah. it's nice it just like ruins the experience and like going yeah. through like i was just like running through viridian forest and like you take your time and like it just it's a little it's a little different which I thought was kind I had of such a good time playing Pokemon Crystal on the Virtual Console when that came out. Like that was one of my favorite playthroughs. Yeah, I've ever done. dude, the Virtual Consoles were a great idea. Like, I, I, yeah, I, they'll, they'll eventually bring it to Switch, but they're trying to drip feed us everything. <laughs> <laughs> True. How do you feel about the um, the DLC that came out? Um, it was exactly what I expected. I wasn't really blown away by it. The only thing that caught me off guard was the Pokemon following you, but even then, they didn't really do it correctly. <laughs> yeah, they could they could have definitely made that a little bit better. My hope, yeah. and I've talked about this before, but I just hope that the next one makes it a little bit more worth it. Like, obviously, yeah, they that's, the, all the that's new, the worth it one. All the new legendaries and shit. So it was kind of cool. They're like allowing us to at least just like dip the feet in to kind of like get a little mm -hmm. bit of a new area of the region, which I think was cool. Like, it was nice to be able to see all the new Pokemon, but like all the other shit, I don't know. Like the DLC, the is best definitely... part of the DLC was the music, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, the, the the music and the the new Pokemon around, which is kind of a weird thing to get excited about. Like, oh, these Pokemon that have existed for years, now we can catch them. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, I, that's what everybody was like mad about the Nat decks, where they're like, they're just gonna remove them and then add them in DLC, and you guys are gonna get excited about it. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> true. Like, I don't really think it's too big of a deal. Like, I don't know. I enjoyed yeah. it. Like. It was, it's definitely, like, it was a couple hours of content that was something, like, new on an on yeah. older game. But I'm just hoping, like, for me, I'm excited I, for the new one. Like, I really enjoyed it because it gave, I, I, really, I really did like it, especially completing the second decks or whatever, because it, you know, they rewarded you with uh, a crown or whatever for yeah. beating it. So now I'm just, every battle I, I mean, I just got a crown on and just, you know, I'm just like, I put effort and time into this game, whereas I don't think I've battled anybody else with a crown yet. So, you know, it's like, they've just <laughs> not bothered. Flexing on him. <laughs> Exactly, and also like, I really like the um, the cards that they have at the the battle because it tells you like if the person's completed their decks or not. Yeah, and yeah, it's really yeah. Cool. That is pretty sick. 
Yeah, it gives you it gives you a, a reason to complete your decks because you actually get to show it off. But I really would enjoy if Pokemon add or if Nintendo in general just added achievements to their their games. I agree. It would it would translate super well to Pokemon too. Like yeah, there's so much you could do for Pokemon achievements. Exactly. Do you know? Do we have a release date on the the Crown Tundra DLC? I don't even know. If uh, is it on next month? <laughs> is it? I don't know. Is it November? I don't remember. To be honest, I don't remember either. Like, it seems like it's been forever since that uh, that other one just came out. When yeah. Crown Tundra. Uh, 2020. <laughs> it says. Brilliant. That's what I'm looking at right now. It just says 2020. Uh, didn't give us an exact day, but they did give us a month. Yeah. I just don't remember the month. Well, yeah, that'll be fun. It's always nice to. It'll be. It'll be cool to be able to stream that, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I, haven't even I wasn't sure what to do because, like, I originally did my let's play, and then I was like, "Hmm, do I, do I, do I do a video coverage of this or do I stream it?" So yeah. what I decided to do was I streamed it, and then I got my friend to edit it down into like a, a watchable video. Yeah, I think that's the way to go for like at least the DLC. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's what, that's what kind of my plan is as well. Yeah, because I don't know. There's not. It's I don't know with the nature of it. It's it's a lot of fillery stuff. It's not like anything of like super substance it's yeah, like crazy story importance like, yeah nothing crazy so yeah, you so you're playing i just noticed like on your twitter you're always going through like some wild ass rom hacks right you could do it yeah like, i don't know i kind of accidentally became a rom hack youtuber <laughs> like i just i did like a video on like uh some i guess intentionally bad pokemon rom hacks and yeah. uh, that video blew up and then since then i've kind of just people have kind of looked at me as like a big rom hack guy so i've just been covering like every rom hack i can kind of like find that looks decent yeah and uh yeah, right now i'm playing pokemon fools gold which is i mean i don't really like gen 2 rom hacks that much because it's quite limited graphically and uh, i think viewers i mean i don't mind them but i think viewers don't really particularly like them because there's no, there's only so much you can make for like thumbnails and interesting titles when when it comes to the older games yeah. so it's it's hard making content on them the, the best way to go about it would probably be to get someone to draw you a thumbnail for every episode but that would get expensive exactly um so yeah, I'm playing this game called uh, Fool's Gold, and it's basically just a game full of like regional variants. Like every single Pokemon, 256 Pokemon have been changed type and appearance, and it's pretty cool. That is pretty sick. Yeah, I remember. I think I saw something. You're like, "What type is this thing?" It, it like, <laughs> which is it's fun to like switch it up. Like I've always thought of you as doing like some crazy ass ROM hacks, and like I'd be looking on Callum's channel. I'm just saying, what's 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 going on in the new the new ROM hack world? Like there hasn't really been anything crazy to come out lately. Like I don't know. I'm kind of probably out of touch when it comes to that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like it's like a whole other world, man. Like there was I, I, the reason I was always so against ROM hacks is because. I actually used to really dislike playing ROM hacks on my channel. I used to rather just play like randomizers or whatever, or like play the official games. And whenever I did cover a ROM hack, it would have to be a completed finished ROM hack. Otherwise, I didn't really feel like it was worth my time. But now I'm like covering betas and stuff like that and yeah. showing off the, all these ROM hacks. And I've had a few people where I've covered a beta and people are like, oh, wow, I, I feel like I should actually finish my game now because he's giving me some exposure. <laughs> Which is super cool. Okay. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. I don't know. Prison shit. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm a big. I've, I've, I'm starting to really enjoy and appreciate uh, ROM hacks. There's um. There's this game called Pokemon Procyon that's like just in Japanese right now. But that that's probably going to be the best ROM hack whenever it's, whenever I can finally read the dialogue. It's yeah. like a sequel of Pokemon <laughs> Vega. It's so good. The UI is insane. That's pretty sick. Yeah. People go. People go hard on those things, man. There's a lot of talent when it comes to yeah. making that shit. Yeah. I'm cool. hoping Pokemon like hire people from these rom hacks instead of you know I, th I think i did hear someone got get a job at pokemon or game freak or something or, or, or i don't know i think i think i heard like someone that made pokemon prism maybe i'm misremembering but I don't i've know. seen I think... i've seen like people on twitter that have posted like um just like character designs of like certain like fake mons and shit and like have actually gotten jobs as like um like illustrators for like new pokemon and stuff which is super sick yeah Making fan art is not a waste of your time. Like it is not at all. It's it's a it's a good way to like get exposure, obviously, and you know maybe the company will see it and pick you up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and it just works super well that Pokemon's one of like the best things for like inspiring fan art, <laughs> which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like remember Temtem took that Platypus Pokemon and made it into their game. It's like their best designed thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you dude, you remember when like 
this is just like a random memory I had, but like when when Gen Five was first coming out and they showed the silhouettes of the starters, like they just showed. I like wasn't actually out. around for that. Oh, I, was, really? I wasn't like on the internet for that, but I did see what people drew for them. Yes, yeah, there was, so was like to do that again. Yeah, they just showed the silhouettes, and I remember for Oshawa, everybody thought it was gonna be like a platypus with like an acorn on its head, and it's so fucking funny going back and yeah. seeing that shit. Oh my yeah, God. actually, I think they kind of did that for Zarud, like a little bit, like not the same, but like. Yeah, line, yeah, yeah, but I remember seeing people draw Zarud. Yeah, I forgot about that. That thing's actually released now, right? You can, if you like, have like a movie pass or something, you can like get that thing. Yeah, not the biggest fan of it to be honest. I don't really care about any of the new legendaries except from Zacian. Zacian's yeah. like the only one I really like. Yeah, I don't really care for him either. That thing, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like legendary. legendary you know? I don't know. Yeah. It might be a mythical, I guess. So is it? Is that mythical? I don't know. I think it is. Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, I guess they were meant to have a different vibe than legendaries, but I don't know. He just kind of looks like he kind of looks like a. I don't know. Kind of reminds you of like a Rangaru. You know, it doesn't seem like anything special. Yeah. I don't know. It is cool to like see them go with those types of styles, like compared to all the a lot of the other Pokemon, which are like more kind of like geared toward like cute and like I don't know. Like the, that one at least has like kind of a cool vibe to it. I yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it's just for me the ability. I, I would rather have a gimmicky legendary than have him have a garbage. He's got like Leaf Guard as ability or some dumb yeah, shit. Yeah, what the just... fuck, dude? They're like making new Pokemon. They're like, all right, what ability could we make sure nobody cares about for this thing? Like, they could make something yeah. cool. Like, even if they, I don't know, Leaf Guard? Like, come on now. What is that? Like, if in the sun you don't get status conditions? Yeah, something like that. There's what also, the what's that new Calyrex? Dude, I hate that thing. I think it's disgusting. Wait, what is it? Calyrex, that thing that's coming out in Crown Tundra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the Bro, fuck is that like, thing? Yeah, like dude, the that thing is attack? the most disgusting thing I've seen. Dude, it's just, I think it's the type also. It's psychic uh, Gra uh, grass. Yeah, psychic grass. If it was, if it was, like, if it was like fairy grass, I would kind of respect it a little bit. I'm just, I just don't yeah. like psychic types, man. <laughs> this man is about to get destroyed by U-turns all day. Yeah, like <laughs> we've already got Salabi and like I think we've got a few other psychic grass types. Like yeah, there's, just... there's just a lot of interesting choices where it's like what are they like what are they thinking when they when it comes to that cuz like there's definitely new room there's room for new type combos and all sorts of crazy shit but then they'll just hit us with some some something we already have which is whack. Exactly. Yeah, that's I don't know, maybe, I think it's maybe them just trying to go for the longevity thing. I really want them to make a normal ghost type, like, that is my favorite type combination, like, that doesn't exist yet, because I've, I've played, like, i played, like, uh, Infinite Fusion, like, ROM hacks, like, or, or mm -hmm. other fan games, where, like, I fuse, like, Gengar and Snorlax, and it's just a normal ghost type, and it is just the best type, I love it so much. That would actually be super sick. I... Yeah, that's, like, the type combo I'm waiting for. I don't care what it looks like, just give me a normal ghost type. Yeah, there was a... I was playing a ROM hack that had that had that it was like Gaia or something. I don't remember exactly actually, but no, I remember no. There was a in, I think in Gaia. Or, God damn it, I don't, I don't remember which one it was. But there was a there was a fairy dark type that was like basically Grimmsnarl, which I thought was hilarious. That like when Grimmsnarl came out, it was like just like yeah. a big, like buff troll, and it was like the same thing. <laughs> Which is pretty yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that that was kind of like an an obvious way to go for a dark fairy, I suppose. Yeah, true. There's just so many. There's so many possibilities, man. One one thing I wanted Absolutely. to talk talk to you about. So, living in Scotland, you still, I mean, I know you go to a lot of conventions and stuff, right? You go to like PAX and all that, like you have in the past, obviously. There ain't shit yeah, I don't really go to a lot, but I, you know, I'm not the biggest convention guy. Surprisingly, I actually really only go to see the people. I don't really care about the con. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, see, I haven't been to a lot. Like I've been to a couple, but that's definitely the coolest part of just being able to like meet and hang out with people that like you're friends with online and stuff. Yeah, and like people that you know, people come up to you and like I watch your stuff, and I'm like, damn, this is nuts. You know what I mean? Like, it puts it in like a different wrong. perspective. Like when you see it as like rather than like numbers, like seeing it like actual physical people and like having conversations with them is super cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like do you ever, do you... Get, do you ever get recognized in public, like just in normal life? Yeah, I, I actually have uh, quite a few times. Um, I think like I, I there was a while when I guess before quarantine, you know, I'd go out. I think it'd be like every other month, uh, somebody would be like, "Yo," it might not say, sound like a lot compared to other YouTubers, but like about three hundred k subscribers. I think yeah, like pretty crazy, man. Ten percent of them are they live in the UK, so that's like you know you'd put it down to thirty five thousand. Like it's yeah, it's like pretty, pretty small crazy. odds. And you're at least you're like one of the more recognizable dudes. Like 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like it's probably easy to spot you in a crowd. You're all tall. Like I was talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. and Shofu are like two of like I could spot you dudes in like a room. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shofu's like one of the only people in the community bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, man. Conventions, conventions are really fun. Being able to like interact with people. Like the most recent one I was at was TwitchCon, which I've talked about before on here. But like, it's just cool. Like I honestly didn't even spend that much time in the convention. It was mostly just like meeting people outside of it and like going to, like the parties and stuff and like seeing people that i'm like oh my god like i've literally known you online for like eight years but i've never yeah really even like seen you <laughs> yeah well. i think there's been like four sirens in this video i'm absolutely and, <laughs> for real, and there's some shit going down out there bro terribly sorry i think it's just i live near a hospital but yeah, yeah I, I i recently met like uh munching orange for the second time like last packs which was five six months ago seven five five months ago nice yeah. I've never been to be a PAX before. But meet you sometime though. I have hella FOMO when I see everybody on Twitter. I'm like, oh, y'all are y'all are chilling. I'm I'm just, I'm just here. I got to Yeah, hard, yeah, yeah. I, I feel that. It. Especially like now I have like an actual job. Like, you know, like make time and like fly out. Especially a lot of it's on the East Coast and it's man, kind of a hassle. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna it'd make be, it to it at some point. If you went to a con sometime though. Yeah, man. I'd love to. I'd love to kick it with the gang sometime. Seems seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's I don't know. It's crazy meeting people that you like uh i guess used to watch online you know like years ago and now they're kind of like you're i guess you become your friend it's, it's super cool right yeah it just it, it puts things in a whole different like perspective which is super sick yeah it's like god damn like i i didn't expect this you know like it, i you, you probably it's, it's it's like a really generic thing to say but you, you if you told your younger self that this is what would be your life you know you you would never believe it <laughs> right yeah you would you and I, or obviously not me now, but you at least, full time fucking. You're you're as close as you can get to being a, a, a real life Pokemon master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. My yeah, childhood never... selves would be like, "Damn, you telling me I get to just play Pokemon?" <laughs> yeah, <super laughs> that's the dream cool. for a lot of people, man. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, I, I love my job so much. Like it's, you know, it's. I don't know if I. I mean. I'm just I don't see myself still doing this in like 10 years from now but I to be honest when I was like doing this when I was 18 I didn't see myself doing it past like 21 so I'm sure. 23 now so it's just like you know I guess anything could happen we'll just we'll see <laughs> yeah, so that was what that was like one of the interesting things for me it was like when I because I graduated college I got my degree and I was like still just doing YouTube full-time and I was thinking I'm like I should probably get a real job at some point like I spent all this money to like go to college and shit <laughs> so yeah. I ended up doing it but I don't know man it's it's tough. Like sometimes you gotta think about you gotta have something to like fall back on. Like, who knows where the YouTube is even gonna be like ten years from now? And it's like mm -hmm, exactly, oh, man. It's crazy. Believe it or not, my secondary career choice is a tattoo artist. So, <laughs> dude, I was gonna ask like if you had like anything like what you think you would be doing if you weren't doing YouTube full time. Tattoo artist. I huh? really wanted to be a tattoo artist. That's why I wanted to be when I was younger. And then YouTube kind of just fell into my lap. Uh, almost. I mean, I I did put a lot of time and effort into it. It's not like I got super lucky yeah. or anything. Like I did put a lot of the hours in to become big on YouTube or whatever. But yeah, like tattoo artist was a, my original. Like that's my that's what I want to be because I I really like drawing and art and I also really like tattoos. So it was kind of just like a no brainer. That's sick. Uh, and that's still something I'm considering. It's just you know I can kind of start doing it whenever. I just, you got I'm to not look for it. I never knew that you were like into art. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I've not really drawn. Uh, I guess I don't know. I think I've just got an eye for it. I've, I've not really drawn or anything like that. I'm I'm pretty decent at graphic design too, but you know, I didn't go to school for anything. I just yeah, you know, that's like kind of where I'm at. Like I'm not like good at illustration. Like I've always like drawn and stuff, but I always have just had like an eye for like design. Like I lot I like to do logo design and like things like that. I like really just always been interested in like web design and shit like that. So it's like it's weird. Like I'm a graphic designer, but like I'm not like an illustrator. So like a lot of people think of like. I don't know art like there's just so many different waves of art where it's like yeah sit me down so with much. like a pencil like I could draw some shit but like I haven't that's not what I've like focused like graphic design is just something that like I don't know it's a little yeah bit, a little uh, video different. editing or graphic design is like another like if I wasn't doing uh I guess you know YouTube it's like you know I could be a tattoo artist but that and that, you know I'd have to there's a lot of time sink into that so I'd maybe need another job at the side mm -hmm. and then uh you know the other thing i i have the immediate skills i have is that i can do graphics pretty well and i also have you know video editing so like I, people could pay me to edit the videos or something like i don't know those, those are other career options yeah but see what's I'll cool just... about like having the youtube knowledge is like you have 
not only like knowledge of like marketing, like just like through association, like you, you, you know, digital marketing and also mm -hmm. like the ability, like video editing is like a pretty sweet skill. Like I've actually kind of a, at my current job, like I mostly just do, like I do graphic design and marketing things, but like they've kind of transitioned me into doing more um, like video editing stuff because I do have like that basic knowledge that like now they kind of like push me to like learn more about video editing and shit. So like I do a lot of like our video marketing and just like random shit. Like they'll just give me like a nice camera and like a cool like microphone. They're like, all right, go like make something with this. So I'm like, it's, it's, it's fun to mess around with because it's something that like a, a side of YouTube that I've always enjoyed. Like my videos haven't had like a crazy amount of editing necessary, obviously, but it's like still like just having that knowledge has kind of opened some doors to like be able to do some shit. Like not the average person like knows how to use like Premiere. Yeah. Like I, I kind of like have like gotten into After Effects a little bit knowing mm -hmm. certain things. But it's like there's always that like a little bit of skill set like you don't even realize that you're kind of like getting as a YouTuber, which is cool. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't realize like I don't know for me, all this stuff is just second nature. So when like somebody like I don't know when I'm able to like maybe teach one of my friends something that I find to just be easy and simple and second nature, I'm just like that. Nah, maybe I've got like more skills than I give myself credit for. You know what yeah. I mean? Like exactly, man. And a lot of people think of YouTube as like oh, there's like. They got lucky. They it's nothing. like super easy job, but dude, it's like it's it's extremely stressful, and like there is a lot that you, that goes into it. That's like behind the scenes kind of shit, that mm -hmm. not a lot of like the average person thinks about. But yeah, exactly. Like it's the not easy. amount of hours you've got to sit down at home, and I don't know. Like I, I find myself spending hours just responding to messages, and it's you know it's great, but I I I, I don't know. I never feel productive unless I'm actually like physically recording a video, even though I am doing behind the scenes stuff like planning projects or you know whatever yeah that's one of the other things that's like the one of the big differences to like having a nine to five job as compared to like youtube mm -hmm. is that you never you never feel like you're off the clock like as a youtuber like you always feel like you're falling behind if you're not like actively working on something or like putting some content out if you miss a couple days like you feel like you need to like step it up and it's it's, it's hard yeah. to like be in that mindset all the time like exactly but it's uh it can be exhausting comes with comes with the territory but it's also it's God, it's definitely one of the best jobs there is. Absolutely, sure. yeah. Like, there's just pros and cons to every single job, and I, I don't know. I, if I could have this job for the rest of my life, I absolutely would, but I know that's not realistic, so I'll just write it as long as I can, and then when I have to move on, I'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> for now, you're fucking killing it, man. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I don't know. To me, um, it's super sick seeing that, like, like you said, I've been doing this for nearly eight years now. I'm still consistently getting like you know at least like ten thousand people checking out my videos every day like it's that's just crazy to me like obviously i've probably gained a new audience entirely over those eight years like you know but it's still cool that people are still interested enough to to watch what i do because there's been plenty of youtubers that have like come and gone because you know people just i guess aren't interested anymore and i'm just surprised that people are still interested in me <laughs> yeah man you're definitely doing something right <laughs> yeah i think yeah. it's just the, the other thing about youtube is just like the the drive you just got to have like the drive to do it regularly and you know it's understandable that sometimes people take like a month off or something because it's it does get exhausting but i've not really taken more than like a week off like and if i did take a week off it was because i was ill <laughs> yeah yeah i was thinking about like as I kind of got into my new job and stuff, like looking at there was, there's like, I've obviously slowed down a lot, but like there still hasn't been an entire month that I have gone since like 10 years that I haven't uploaded something on YouTube. I, I'm yeah. That's sure. a ridiculous drive, which is like, <laughs> <laughs> which is insane. But all right, man, yeah. it looks like we're, we're running a little bit out of time, but yeah, we got to definitely do this again, man. Absolutely. If you'll, if you'll have me on, dude, I can talk for forever about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at it too. See, I need somebody with that, with that, with that type of mindset, man. It's always cool to like talk about just even random shit. If it's not Pokemon, you know, it's like, it's cool to, cause it's also cool. I mean, we've never even really like had a discussion like this. So it's, it's cool to kind of like get to know you on like a different level and shit. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I've ever properly spoken to you over a call like that. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's been nice. Yeah, man, it's been great. All right, guys, Callum's link will be in the description. Obviously go check this man out, hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely be back with this boy. We got more. Thank we got you more to talk about. Me, man. Of course, man. All right, I'll see you guys later.